I'm live. I guess I'm live. I must be live. It says I'm live. We'll see if anyone joins us real soon now. Um, I'm just wearing a shirt that's sort of the same color as the Brooklady tins, but maybe it's a little bit faded and maybe the light lighting isn't perfect in here. Ah, we don't have anybody watching yet that I know of, but maybe that will change really soon now. I'm going to pour myself a dram before I start doing some unboxing. I have a, a box that was sent to me from Ontario. This here is a Oven 14, which I'm going to, I think I'm going to kill it uh, in this session. We got one person watching. Well, that's great. Could use a couple more before I start opening boxes and shredding things and um, cutting into things. And uh, oh, there's Espen. <laughs> Good to have you already. Well, maybe evening for you, but it's two twenty-one in the afternoon for me. So that's uh, we're getting there. There's <laughs> John Belushi. Oh yeah, I plan. I definitely plan on killing this one. It's the uh, the Oban fourteen that I've had for a while. I've replaced it with a Glen Cadam ten which I like a lot. Yeah, it smells nice. It smells really nice today. we got four people watching, which is excellent. We're off to a start. Mm. Cheers, how's Vancouver Island? It's a sunny day today with some clouds off in the distance. It's nice and warm. I have my air conditioning going. Uh, Vancouver Island seems to be faring okay right now. And it's a nice a Saturday afternoon for a change. Oh, there's David. David, hi, hi. Good to have you with us, David. Thanks for joining. Mm. Whiskey Ace, yes. Good to see you too, Whiskey Ace. Uh, yeah, happy Saturday as well. Happy Saturday to everyone out there, incidentally. Oh, uh, yeah. Five people watching. That's good. That's nice. We're off to a start. And there's Loch Ness. <laughs> Happy Saturday. Yes. Yes, Loch Ness. We're going to have a good one today. We're going to have a good little session here. I don't know if I'm going to stay on for very long, but those are famous last words of mine. I always say that. Next thing you know, five hours later, <laughs> you guys are still commenting, and I'm still sitting here going, uh, well, uh, what do we drink next? <laughs> mm. This is only my second whiskey of the day. My first one was, um, what was it? Oh, yes, Jura 12. What whiskey is that? Oh, this one is the Oban 14. And the last one that I had before coming on was a, uh, um, a Jura 12. That's what I was drinking while watching Whiskey Jason's um, stream. And it was just a surprise. You know, I wanted to check if there was anybody actually streaming right now to see if it would be okay for me to come on and not interfere with anyone else. And sure enough, there was someone else, and that was uh, Whiskey Jason. Uh, Quig Short. Live show is approximately three hours to so settle in. <laughs> it could be. It could be. It depends. I do have some other things to do this afternoon or this evening. But I can stay on for a little while while I finish off this bottle and I open up some other things. Uh, there's Thomas L. saying, greetings from Denmark. Sunday here. In 36 minutes, oh, yeah, well, it's still Saturday here for quite a while. Uh, for uh, seven hours and 36 minutes. Oh, if it was already Sunday, I'd have to get to work in less than 18 hours. Well, no, I wouldn't like that. But it's good. We got some people from the other side of the pond on here, which is nice. Very nice. We got 11 people watching. Maybe it's almost time to start unboxing the box. <laughs> Funny thing about Oban, it's always best when it's almost empty. This Oban is at its best right now. It's just 
just about done. And it's very nice. It's very nice to drink. I'm not, I'm not um, doing any analysis of it. I'm just enjoying it. And there's Chris Stockley coming in from Ontario. I should actually do this kind of thing here uh, like that. There we are. And uh, go, oh, Greg's here too. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Uh, okay, and some greeting from Denmark. I missed that, Greg, you snuck one in there. I, I just missed that one. Uh, and over here, we got uh, David saying, haven't had a jury in, in a while. Has it improved very well, mediocre when I had it last? Well, actually, the new jurors that I have, or the newer bottlings, uh, there's a Jura 10 and a Jura 12. They're sort of, uh, okay, you know, but nothing great. But the one that I used to like, and I still have some, it's the Jura Elixir, and I can still get it. That's the older bottle. It's 12 years old. It's bourbon barrel. It's just beautiful. And there's Jack from England. Hello, Jack. And John Belushi again saying, George Orwell finished 1984 on Jura. That's why they call the whiskey prophecy. Now I get it. <laughs> okay. Now that we're talking about Ontario, uh, might as well go. Uh, now we got some people watching. It's it's about time to do some um, some opening of uh, boxes. Uh, I would like it if um, if Barry Dunham was here uh, because the box comes from him. But maybe he'll join us later on. Maybe he'll figure out that I'm on. Uh, and everyone saying hello to everyone else. I think it's going to be time to pull that up. Uh, okay, so I'm going to get the box. It's right here. And it has a this end up. So we got to keep this end up like so. And this is going to be opening up. It's a real professional looking parcel. Uh, my boxes and parcels don't look so professional when I send them to someone. They look uh, rather rough. <laughs> and uh, this one, if I haven't mentioned it yet, it's from Barry Dunham in Ontario. And um, we did a little trade. I traded him some... Oh, look at these big big poppers. I traded him some, um, what did I trade him? Oh yes. Seven rebels. I sent him a bottle of seven rebels, which is a, uh, Weiser's, um, it's a bottle from Weiser's. It's a BC exclusive. And I have another one, which I'm going to try soon. Ah, uh, here we go. This is a stock and barrel, three barrel whiskey. I'm going to read what it says on there in a moment. Now put this away for the sec for now. Let's see what this is. Three barrel whiskey established 2009. Yeah. <laughs> um, return for refund. Stillwaterdistillery.com. Stillwaters Distillery, Concord, Ontario. And it says our craft is our pride on here. Uh, that, oh, what's in the box, says Luke, Luke Stagg. Well, I can get to that. Uh, this is one of those that's in the box. And it says on here, uh, blend of three carefully selected barrels of different whiskeys. Each barrel of corn whiskey, single malt whiskey, and rye whiskey is individually distilled and aged. When blended together, the sweetness of the corn, fruit, fruitiness of the malt, and spiciness of the rye create this rich and complex whiskey. This is a Canadian whiskey, and it looks like it was bottled in 2000. Oh, that's not right. 2705. I don't know what that means, but this is a stock and barrel blend. Canadian whiskey. It doesn't have an H statement on it. And it's 43% alcohol by volume, which for a Canadian whiskey is very good. Uh... No hand sanitizer, food quick me. I always put some of it all around the box or when I open it and then get rid of it at the moment. Crisp wise. Oh, come on. 
I sanitized my hands already once today. I even washed them once today. That should be all right. I'm not worried. Nice color, yeah. I don't know if it's been colored or chill filtered or what, but... Uh, Uh, yeah, that's one thing. It says 2705, but this was established in 2009. <laughs> Unless, of course, the, um, yeah, they were established in 2009, and I don't know if their whiskey is sourced from someone else. Maybe they're just blending whiskey that's made by some, you know, whiskey that's uh, distilled by someone else. I don't know. 2000 set, it's 200705. There are no spaces between the, the numbers, so I, I don't know. There is something else in the box. Yeah, have a sip. Yeah, what's here? Uh, just worried for you. Oh, don't be worried for me. I'm in a space that's smaller than an elevator with the general public for 60 hours a week. I drive a taxi, by the way, for a living. And so I am exposed to whatever germs and maladies and illnesses and communicable diseases that people bring in the taxi. And you know what? I don't get sick often because I like to think I have a very strong immune system that's able to fight these things off. And here we go. And exciting, he says. Okay. Now let's see what else we got. People are saying hi to each other. Uh, yeah, don't, don't be worried for me, Greg. It's all good. It's all good. Uh, let's hide these things. Hey, you know, I learned this trick from you, how to put these things on, how to get rid of them. Okay. What do we got here? We got uh, some more of this end up. Some more very well-packed boxes here. Uh-oh. 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 Another stock and barrel. And it has a wee sample here, too. Uh, this is a red blend. Oh, it's all red blend. So I got a wee sample, and if I want to collect this one, I can collect this one while I open this one and taste it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> these are rare bottles. around. You can't get these here in British Columbia. They're only available in, um, in Ontario. Uh, okay. Let's see what else we got. We got 18 people watching, which is great. Uh, we've been on for 12 minutes and 55 seconds. Wow. Mm. Maybe this immunity comes from some <laughs> from something above 40% then. <laughs> yeah. And this one is also bottled at... Uh, 43% ABV, fantastic. Art, science, passion. This is another stock and barrel blend. This is a, uh, what's it say? Oh, there's my friend Ulakan. Good evening. And one more for now. Oh, fantastic. You guys are great. Uh, and there's one here from Toro. One more for now. Oh, well, sure. Okay. Slanchava. Yeah. Mm. Right here we got. It. Okay. This is the red blend. What is the number? Does this one have a number? 130702. Maybe these are bottle numbers. I think these are bottle numbers on, on the bottom uh, right corner of the label. Of the, yeah. And this one also 43% ABV, 750 mils, product of Canada, stock and barrel from Concord, Ontario. Yeah, stillwatersdistillery.com. Here it says, stock and barrel red blend. Our craft is our pride. We believe this outstanding artisanally blended whiskey is an exceptional product in both taste and quality. And it says the same in French, le blend rouge. Notre métier est un art et nous en sommes fiers. Uh, nous croyons que ce remarquable assemblage de artisanal Produit un whisky à la saveur et à la qualité exceptionnelle. Yeah, 
well, the, their grammar in French isn't so good, but they're from Ontario, so it, it's excusable. <laughs> Very nice. Well, what I'm going to do is put this little sample in with my samples, of which I only have two left besides this one. Come on. Get out of there. Okay, gotcha. There's my little sample bottle. Okay, that's great. All of this was sent to me by from uh, Barry Dunham. He sent me both of these. Uh, he sent me both of these stock and barrel blends. I have a, a rye, a stock and barrel rye, and I have a stock and barrel um, single malt as well, which were sent to me earlier this year by um, Rob Klompstra. Rob Klompstra sent me those. I sent him a bottle of uh, cask strength um, Epicurean. And he sent me two bottles of, now I've got all the stock and barrels uh, that there are, which is wonderful. Just did a little bit of trading. All right, what else is going on here? This is uh, Silver Lock Whiskey Club saying, how do you all just cracked open a bottle of Rasse while we wait? 2018 release, Rasse. Yeah, that's a new, that's a newish distillery, isn't it? We don't have it. I've never seen any of that here. It's too bad. Um, and Whiskey Jason says hi. <laughs> hi, Whiskey Jason. Good to have you back with us. <laughs> and over here, had two samples of stock and barrel, but honestly, I wasn't very enthusiastic about them. I reviewed them on my website. Well, you know, it's a new distillery. It's going to be young whiskey. It's a new thing. I'm one of these people who's curious, who wants to try everything. And sometimes I can go through five duds before finding one gem. And that's what it's about, you know. Knowledge is, is power, I suppose. And when you know something is good, then you know what to seek for, what to look for from people, other things from the same distillery and, uh, and to look for that particular bottling again. If you were not impressed by something, then you know to stay away from it. It's just like that. And Billy Select, <laughs> Hillbilly Select Reviews, wow. Nice to have you with us, John. Thanks for joining. And okay, everyone's saying hi to everyone else. And Whiskey Jason says, Greg's Whiskey Guide. Hey, and here, everyone's saying hi to Greg. This is wonderful. <laughs> Canadians are clever. They send samples in plastic so they never break. They also cost less than glass, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I have entire bottles that are plastic. Hmm. But yes, I've had glass bottles break, uh, sample bottles break on me, uh, sent in the mail, and they were broken or they leaked through. And the plastic ones are just cheap. They just press them out thousands at a time. And we got John McLeod saying, uh, evening from Dumfries on Galloway. Fantastic. Nice to have you with us, John. And curious to open my French edition Epicurean. Well, there's a French edition. Cool. Um, yeah, I've had the regular uh, Epicurean, and I've had the cask strength. And I was able to find one more cask strength to send to uh, Rob Klomstra a few months ago. Uh, okay. Uh, here we are. About 10 duds for one good whiskey and 20 duds for one jewel. Yeah, that's about right. That's what happens when you get into that rare and exotic stuff, right? <laughs> I say about half the whiskeys that I get are good. Uh, about 5% are exceptional. Those that are not good are, well, okay, I'll drink it in a pinch. And then there's maybe 5% that really suck. 
it's all subjective anyway. Uh, I, I don't even like putting a quantity on how many are good, but that's, that's not such a wonderful um, uh, track record there, Jason. Um, 10 duds for one good whiskey. That's a lot of money spent. I try and get good and cheap if I can. Uh, yeah, what do we got here? That's how it is. Oh, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Glen Scotia 15. Hi. I've had a couple of Glen Scotias. Never tried the 15. I think I had a 12. Did I have a 10 or a non H statement? I'd have to check my wall back there to be real sure. And, uh oh, here's Greg. Uh, 2019 edition Epicurean involving five by bartenders and retailers to pick casks and Kara helped them blend them together. Color is a bit darker than the regular edition, and ABV is 48. Ah, that must be nice. <laughs> Cheap and Canada in the same sentence. <laughs> well, no, there's some Canadian whiskeys that are expensive, and there's some that are really good, but there are a lot of cheap ones, yes. Oh. See, Glen Scotia. Let's see what Glen Scotias I've had. I'll, I'll tell you in a second here. Um, I'll tell you in a second. What does it come up with? Sample Sunday, Campbelltown Malts Festival. Okay, that one was just a lot of ABV for nothing. Glen Scotia. Whoa, what's going on here? Did I have two of the same? Weird. I did the same sample. I did two samples of the same thing. One on February 19th and one goes up on May 31st. Or one went up on May 31st. Uh, they're both the same whiskey. And it, it would be interesting to see what my two different uh, – different videos where I didn't know that I had done it already. There's a Glen Scotia 12 year old and double cast classic. Okay. I don't think I like the double classic, but I think the, the 12 year old was all right. I'd have to go back, but here it says that I did the a sample Sunday twice. Oh, wait a minute. No, the one that I did in February was the 2019 malt festival. And the one I did in May was the 2018 Malt Festival. So they're not the same whiskey. <clears throat> Good. I didn't do the exact same thing twice. Two different years, batch variation and everything. So they could be completely different whiskeys for all I know. Excellent. So now that I've gone back to that, I can get back here. Uh, there's – oh, whoop. not tried Victoriana, says John McLeod. Neither. I've – Okay, well, she's sipping on an exceptional 12-year-old MacDuff bottled by Caden Heads, which restores my faith in independent bottles. Really delicious. I was shopping today, I must confess, and I found a Klein Leash 19 years old that was bottled by Adelphi. And I read the label on the, uh, the price tag, and it said, $209.99. And I'm not 209 for 19-year-old Klein Leash, well, that's a little steep, but okay, fine. So I came down to the till, and uh, she's trying to uh, find the barcode on the bottle or on the box, and she can't find the barcode on the box. So she says, is it okay if I open this up? I said, yeah, go ahead. So she opens it, and she, the barcode doesn't read. The barcode doesn't read, and... <laughs> She says, uh, 
uh, I can't get a price on this. Do you remember how much it was? And I go, well, I'll go back up and check. So I had to go upstairs to the, you know, the single malt room. And I checked again and it was $299 and 99 cents. And I came back down. I said, I'm sorry, I can't take it. It's $299 and 99 cents. It's $300. I wasn't prepared to pay that you know, $300 plus another 40, um, $45 in, um, in tax. So $345, that's, that's beyond. And I haven't even tasted it. So I know it was a Klein leash. It was the only Klein leash they had. It was an Adelphi 19 year old Klein leash. Maybe I'll be kicking myself next week when I should have gone back and got that, but I ended up buying uh, an Italian whiskey instead. I bought a, Puni Alba. Now I had the Puni uh, Nova a couple of years back. Maybe it was three years ago, but this time I found the Puni Alba. I came down with the Puni Alba, and I'm going, "Okay, I'll try this. Let's let's take a punt and try this." So I didn't get my 19 year old Klein Leash bottled by Adelphi. It was just too expensive. I I just couldn't justify spending $300 on a bottle of whiskey that I haven't tasted yet. Okay, uh, what's Greg got to say here? Why people tell me often I have a Canadian accent when talking in English. Guys, is it meant to be a compliment or contrary? Just wondering. Um, I don't know. You might sound like a French Canadian. Uh, could be. <laughs> Maybe they've, they've, uh, they know some uh, French, uh, some Francophones from Canada. And because they're, I don't know, it's a French connection. I'm, I'm no, no, I'm, take it for what it's worth. Uh, I wouldn't judge it harshly or, or uh, favorably. It's just, okay, that's what you say, or that's what you think, or that's what it sounds like to you. Uh, I've mentioned people's accents before, and every time I mention someone's accent, they take offense. So I haven't done it in a long time. Uh, okay. Uh, Twelve-year-old Macduff. Oh, Macduff. They, they do um, Singleton. Singleton of Dufftown comes from Macduff, doesn't it? I almost bought a bottle of Singleton. Twelve-year-old. Um, they didn't have any tail fire. They just had the regular Singleton, which is good. But I preferred the tail fire, which I haven't had in a while. Oh, well, you know, uh, whiskeys are kind of seasonal and they're kind of ephemeral. You know, they're there when they're available and then they're gone. A lot of them show up for a short time and then they're gone forever. And Whiskey Jason is saying the Epicurean Paris edition only had 600 bottles. Whoa. That's a rare and, ex a rare and exclusive one for you there, Jason. <laughs> Uh, you sound completely French, my friend, with good English. Love it. Oh, okay. Excellent. What we got here? Sugar Marine. I got in late. What are we sampling today? Oh, well, actually, I was opening a box that contained these two stock and barrel blends from uh, Ontario that were sent to me by my friend Barry Dunham. And uh, I just traded him some... Uh, some BC exclusive, a bottle of BC exclusive Seven Rebels for those two. So, uh, yeah, we made a trade. And uh, right now I'm just finishing off a bottle of uh, Open 14 because I have a bit left. And, uh, well, I was a little thirsty, so, you know. Uh, GS12 Glen Scotia 12 is probably the one before the 2015 rebranding. Still have some, but not a masterpiece. Well, yeah, of, of the Glen Scotia that I have tried, I haven't found a masterpiece either. Uh, I'll have to be convinced otherwise. Uh, oh, nice. Food quick. Did you take it? Did I take what? Oh, I forgot. Did I take what? Yeah. Oh, you're talking about the Klein Leash, right? <laughs> $300? No, sorry. 
I'm not that rich. Just added a few drops of Springbank 12 to the Rase while we wait. Oh boy, oh boy, what an experience. Springbank 12. Cast strength. That's one I can't get here. And Rase. I haven't had any Rase either. Maybe someday we'll get here. Hmm. A lot of the stuff I get is, well, Diageo. And official bottlings because the, um, the less expensive uh, independent bottles don't get here. British Columbia and Vancouver Island in particular, eh, good luck. And Chris Stockley starting the evening off with some 12-year-old Aberlauer before finishing off Last of the Blantons. Well, that's a good combination. And John, I'm waiting, awaiting a bottle of Edward Hour 10. Unchill filtered sherry cask, 40%. Oh, that sounds good. I haven't had Edward Hour in quite a while. Um, haven't had Belkin either in a while. Well, it's about time. Yes, it was to Jason. There's a special quick online offer for no shipping fee. So I chose this one because my regular edition is getting low. Label is fun. I'll tell you my thought when I'll open it. Okay, and we're talking about uh, the Paris edition, the 600. Yeah. Okay. I uh, understand it, Food Quick. I did myself, took a risk with that PC 16. PC. Are we talking Port Charlotte? Port Charlotte 16. Yeah, yeah, you, you take a risk, and sometimes uh, you're not prepared for it. Bought a signatory 20-year cast strength Klein leash a few months back. I've had maybe three or four drams from it. I feel that it needs time to open up, and it will improve with time. A few drops of water helps. Yeah. Okay, so if I was to get a 19-year-old Klein leash, I might have three or four drams in the first six months. And uh, have to wait to enjoy it. Yeah. I'd rather get the 14 again or the Distiller's Edition, which I've had before. Those are both great. Okay. And no problem. Okay, no, it is no problem ever. Okay. With many of these indies, often it is hit or miss, but the ratio of good bottlings increases with the reputation reality of offers from some companies. Caden Head being one. Uh, Gordon and McPhail. Yeah, okay. And are you getting pissed tonight? I don't know. I don't think so. I'm only finishing my second dram right now. Tonight, I'm, tonight I might go to sleep. <laughs> Here is. Got the answer. Forget it. Klein leash. Okay, fair enough. Teaspooning. Okay. Uh, Derpy Day said, I'm not going to lie, bro, but you've got, you've been doing good since you broke up. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I'll drink to that. Mm. Nice room. Oh, thank you. Uh, okay. Um, sipping on four year old Norwegian Arctic single malt. Mike in 47% ABV. Well, that sounds interesting. That sounds very interesting. I wish I could get that here. <laughs> All right. And we got uh, kind of profile. Oh, okay. Greg's asking the same thing. He's quicker than I am. Port Charlotte, 16-year-old initially for fish eel 2020 but finally available on ballot on their online 3000 bottles so digital exclusive i just did a premiere with a video of it oh i haven't seen the videos yet i'm about a day and a half behind on videos <coughs> or so i will catch up maybe after this live stream um hoagie there's hey hoagie unusual time just finished a whiskey tasting with a good friend I'll be heading off to bed soon. Yeah, well, I'm glad that you could join us, Hoagie. It's good to have you with us. Uh, what's new in uh, Whiskey Hamster Land? Mm. That is good water. 
I'm going to have to get some more. <laughs> um, yeah, if you'll excuse, excuse me a moment, I'm going to have to go get some more water. Um, yeah, water. Pardon me, I'm just wearing a bathing suit. So I hope this doesn't look bad. Oh, yeah. All right, I'm back. Yeah, unusual time. It's early for me. It's true, Hoagie. It's early for me, but um, I thought I would do this now and maybe catch up on watching videos later. Let's pour us a little more of this uh, open 14. Okay, well, that's two grams, and there's just a little bit left in there. So that's going to be for the end. How to, Kurt? Andy, did Cindy reach out to you during quarantine? Boy, I bet she regretted. <laughs> uh, off topic. Off, off topic. Uh, she didn't really reach out, no, and she lives far away now. I think we talked once, and I'm not really quarantined because I'm still working. Uh, okay, great. Uh, wow, I didn't even know they made whiskey in Norway. Yeah, it's kind of surprised me too. Huh. Uh, no, this is not bad. It's easy drinking. It's 43%. Greg's Whiskey says hi to Hoagie. Everyone's saying hi to everyone else. This is good. This is like a social, um, it's a social gathering. You know, people are, people are uh, connecting with each other, which is great. A blind tasting yesterday, Yamazaki, Deanston, and Kleinleash. Uh-oh, what was the result of that? Was that a train wreck or was it something? Okay, I must confess that I like... Deanston 12 and Kleinleash 14. Those are both excellent whiskeys. The Yamazaki 12, I've never – have I had a Yamazaki 12? I'll have to check my samples here or my sample videos. Uh, Yamazaki. Video zero. That means that I have not tried a Yamazaki sample. Well, live and learn. So I don't know. It'd be interesting to find out what your results were there, uh, Silver Lock Whiskey Club. Uh, and, oh, Jason Coates. Great. And there's Hoagie saying, aside others, we had the new Freud 10 cast strength batch 12. Batch 12 already? Oh, it seems only yesterday that I had batch 10, and then batch 11 was the newest, latest thing only a few months ago. And now we're on batch 12? Wow. I'll probably not get it around here unless somebody sends me a sample because for some reason, Lafroig 10 cask strength does not get sold here. doesn't get covered here. Can recommend. Oh, fabulous. Okay, good. Well, maybe someday if a sample does show up for me, then I'll try it. <laughs> but I won't be able to get a bottle around here. There are so many countries producing whiskey now at Chris Stockley, even Italy. Foodquig explained earlier on he picked up a bottle of Puni uh, Distillery Italian Whiskey. Yeah, it's from the north of Italy, just uh, near, the, uh, near the Austrian border. And if you go back in time and check out that record-breaking electric car run by um, Horst Lüning, you got to know who Horst Lüning is if you're watching my channel. Horst Lüning did a record-breaking electric car run over the Alps from Bavaria to northern Italy in his Tesla, and he ended up at the Puni Distillery. Yeah, yeah. 
That'll be my second bottle of Puni actually ever because I had the Puni Nova a few years back. Uh, what's going on here? Okay. Um, it was under part hot gear last week, but we're back to winter. Oh. Wow. Back to winter. Yuck. It's sherry. Okay, sherry cask. No, oh, it's sherry. It's not a whiskey. It's a sherry. That's interesting. Uh, can they actually call it a sherry if it's not from Jerez, Spain? Single malt. Oh, okay, no, we're talking sherry cask, right? Okay. Uh, it's got to be. If it's a single malt, it has to be a sherry cask. Okay. Yama 12 is very nice and positive. Okay. Just too expensive. Okay, nice, positively typical Japanese. So in other words, it's it's um, nothing sticks out and grabs you. It's sort of harmonious and undertoned and, yeah, tasty, but nothing really jumps out at you. Okay. Typical Japanese. And expensive, yes. Yeah. Only the really cheap Japanese stuff is affordable anymore. Uh, many countries may produce whiskey, but not all of them are good. <laughs> Try the 15-year-old Spanish whiskey and you aren't missing anything, folks. <laughs> Spanish whiskey. Oh, my goodness. Okay, everyone's saying hi to everyone else. Okay, and here we got. It was quite surprising. I ranked the Yamazaki 12 first on the aroma, then Deanston, then Klein Leash. But then in the overall ranking, I got Deanston 12 first, Yamazaki 12, and then the Klein Leash 14. Really? I would prefer, just my own personal taste, Klein Leash 14 to the Deanston 12. Although both are really excellent. Uh, most Nordic nations produce great whiskey, though. Okay. Batch 12. I can't pronounce that with the umlaut on the O and three other vowels before and after it. Batch 12. Where is it? Very, very said these days. I hope I said that right. Probably wrong because I'm no expert on <laughs> on that. Uh, yeah, but Silver Luck Whiskey, Hoagie Brown Me got all these Japanese way before the crazy prices of today, but couldn't keep them all. Okay, let's get on here. Amazing. It is amazing. Hi, Andy. Cheers to you, my friend, Food Quig. Hi, Graham. Good to have you with us tonight or this afternoon, depending on what part of the world you're at. Could be this morning. <laughs> uh, sold my Yama 18 for three times the price I bought it. Oh, you flipper, you. <laughs> uh, I was rooting for Yama based on the price. Okay. Although I find thousands of variants of McMira a bit irritating, to be honest. I've only had one. Uh, it was uh, sent to me by René from the Saulig. He sent me uh, a bottle of Svensk Rök, which is the uh, Swedish smoke. I was not too impressed. Uh, that's the only McMira I've ever had. Um, there was something else in the package, but as we talked earlier, um, Greg was saying that the Canadians are smart by giving plastic bottles, uh, samples. And um, the other whiskey that was in the package got mushed and the glass got broken um, when Rene sent me that uh, Macmira uh, Svensk Rök. But I don't know what the other, I forget what the other whiskey was in there, but it was all over. Uh, it was... It, the bottle was completely smashed and the whiskey had leaked all over the place and it smelled vaguely like whiskey, but I can't tell you what it was, what it was or what it was like. It's been a while now. 
if Rene was with us here now, he could maybe tell me what the hell he, it was he sent me that I didn't manage to get. Anyway, uh, Sherry Cask. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> we got that down. <laughs> Graham Young's going to be doing a live tasting with my buddy in Victoria. My Macaloni's Macna Brach in a couple hours. Oh. Uh, okay, would that be uh, would that be Adam from the Strath? I went by Macaloni's earlier tonight or today at around eleven o'clock, but they were only open at noon. I think they're open noon till four or something silly like that. And I do have Macaloni's. Uh, I I have had Macna Brack. And I've also got a peated Macna Brach, which I haven't opened yet. But there's supposed to be a later whiskey, which is more aged, which is old enough to be a whiskey. Macna Brach is still um, uh, a malt spirit. Uh, it's not. It's a single malt spirit, as far as I know. It is, and it's very malty. Uh, is it the peated one that you're doing there, Graham, or is it the regular one? Because I've done the regular one, but not the peated. I've tasted the peated one, but I haven't done a, an actual video about it here. Uh, I tasted it at the Comox Valley Whiskey Festival back at the very beginning of February. I think I might have that on video somewhere. Uh, hi, Quig. Good to see you streaming. Thank you very much, Scotch Whiskey. Slant Hmm. 17 people watching. I'm a little behind on the um, BRW 1973 goodness food quick. Last time I logged in, your wall was only half full. <laughs> Been a while, has it? <laughs> yeah. Um, you were either watching an older video or it was a while uh, since, um, since you logged in. This is the... Uh, uh, don't worry. On that side, that's as far as it goes. There's, there's, it's white wall beyond that. Uh, but it's gonna get filled up eventually with time. Um, if I had one, I won't, won't have sold it at Hoagie Bear. Me, yeah, I sold three bottles over the years, but because some difficulties, there's only one third. I really felt pain to sell. Yoichi twenty two, but Yamazaki five hour, five H no. Okay. All right. Uh, also, we'll try the Shelter Point Single Malt Batch 5 for the first time. Oh, Shelter Point Single Malt Batch. I'm going to have to check that out. Um, so is this going to be on Adam's, um, on Adam's, uh, what is it, Drink Till You Drop or whatever whatever he calls his, um, his little uh, stream? I'm going to check that out. I'm going to check that out. Okay, and this one here. <laughs> okay, oh, we got. Uh, I think it's a marketing strategy. Flood the foreign market with different variants to make the brand synonymous with Swedish whiskey. And I actually love the green tea. That's a green tea, right? Yeah, I think somebody. I saw somebody uh, uh, do. Uh, I think it was actually. Uh, Rene from Sauleg, who did uh, the Grinte um, Hoagie Bear. I like McMira, but for me, the moments range is overpriced value wise. The Brooks and Seasons range seem to be more interesting usually. Tasted a lot of McMira, but none new since 2019. Okay. Yeah, that's not my area of specialty here. Love the wall at Food Quig. <laughs> at BRW 1973 at Whiskey Guy. Thank you very much. The wall is, uh, yeah, it's still a work in progress. It's, it's going to go. Uh, it's going to go that way. <laughs> Into the other room, a uh, little bit by little bit, you know, a piece at a time. Uh, but lately I've been having a lot of bottles that don't come in boxes or tubes, so it's not completely representative of everything that I've had to drink in the last five years, but it goes on. Ah, uh, what do we got here from Hoagie? I only had the Winter Glück or something like that. Not bad, 
with white white wine finish, I think, but nothing I need a whole bottle of, to be honest. Oh, so was that winter uh, white wine finish, would that have been an ice wine? Because I just tried an ice wine whiskey last night um, for the second time. It was a Wayne Gretzky ice wine finish. It was nice. Hey, Quig says straight whiskey straight L. Hey, Al, thanks for joining us, Big Al. Good to have you with us. And uh, never seen a McMira on the shelves around here. Yeah, me either. <laughs> hmm. You have to go to Scandinavia or Germany to get that stuff, I think. No, Andy, it's just an old work buddy from my hometown. It's the peated. Oh, okay, the peated. Yeah, I've had that one. I've had that uh, oh, old work buddy from hometown. Okay, cool. Very cool. Um, excellent. Okay, at Hoagie, Hoagie Bear, forgot to mention I was sent a sample of Skogshallen, but didn't like it much with some raspberry wine overpowering everything else. Okay. Well, you got to say one thing. They're, they must be kind of innovative there in uh, up in Sweden. Uh, I'm dying to try any shelter point, to be honest. <laughs> Uh, I had a sample last night. Um, it was uh, cast number five, 741. And uh, while I was shooting the video, I said, whiskey, uh, that, that Greg would probably want to be me right now because that stuff was just phenomenal. Um, it was a sample that was given to me by uh, Leon Webb, and it was just fantastic. I have one Leon Webb sample left. This is the 571 from January 31. That's a shelter point, cask number 571. I look forward to this one. I look forward to it, and I will be trying it in the next few weeks. Um, a sample Sunday on a Sunday. <laughs> Any shelter point. And down at the Strath, that's a local liquor store, they have two shelter point exclusives, which I'm going to get my hands on and I have a couple more shelter points here that I'm gonna taste eventually. <clears throat> oh, excuse me. Uh, yeah, you gotta come visit us there, Greg, and go up to shelter point. <laughs> While some concurrent distilleries are doing great. High Coast, for instance. Oh, okay. That's the one that renamed itself from what it was before. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Uh, all right, chaps, need to take a nap now. Enjoy the rest of the stream. And you, Mr. T, have a big virtual man hug. <laughs> Thank you very much, Ogie. Thank you very much. Have yourself a good night and uh, pleasant dreams. And what do we got here? Uh, next one. Cheers, buddy, at Hoagie Bear. Okay. Scotch Whiskey said, I noticed you have the whiskey advent calendars back there. Were they worth it for the money? Ah. <laughs> well, you know, I tried one, and there were some real good ones in there. And then the next year, I bought the next one. And, uh, you know, on the whole, a lot of it is just cask strength for the sake of being cask strength. And some of them are very nice, very tasty. I'd say that out of each one of those calendars, maybe eight whiskeys or so were really phenomenal. And uh, I'd say about, uh, you know, another eight were okay. And I'd say that about another eight were, you know, just filler. Um, I don't know if there's going to be a future uh, whiskey advent calendar uh, coming from uh, the Brays. That would be Jonathan and Cindy Bray who produced them in the past. Because... <laughs> They got busted. They got busted in uh, what was it? Uh, was it Idaho? I think it was in Idaho, where uh, the Idaho uh, State Liquor Board uh, set up a sting for them, where they tried to sell whiskey to Idaho uh, police, whatever. 
the last I heard from them was that they were doing a trying to get money, trying to fund, trying to get funding online to pay for their legal costs in Idaho. Um, hmm. So I don't think we're going to be getting any more of these um, advent calendars. And you know what? I probably won't go for a future advent calendar, even if there are some available. It was not cheap. It was an inter interesting to try whiskeys that you'd never get anywhere else. And like I said, one third of them were good. Another third of them were so-so. And another third were crap. Just my opinion. Uh, yeah. So where was we now? Am I, am I behind? I'm behind again. Look at that. I'm behind. Okay. Hey, Al, Whiskey Straight. Notice that you'll be with Jim on Monday. It could be fun. Okay, let's go on. Um, yep, I'll be a good night on Monday with Jim as we discuss Edward Dower. Okay, I'm going to be at work. So, Or or you guys are going to be online when I'm sleeping. So I'm going to miss that. Sorry. Hey, yeah, my friend at Foodquig. I'll never forget your video there. Besides, Leon is doing great reviews on his new YouTube channel. Check it out, guys. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Leon Leon is, uh, the man is, is stellar. He's, he's and, and a wonderful host. Um, Leon's a good guy. Absolutely. My videos from there, yeah. We had, we had a very wonderful time. I hope to repeat that again someday when all of this COVID thing is completely swept under the rug and forgotten about. We're starting to get back a little bit closer to normal now, but it's nothing like uh, – it, it's going to be a while. wonder if we're going to have a whiskey festival in Victoria early next year. And I wonder if the uh, – well, when we finally do have whiskey festivals again, I'll get together with them. Um, Shelter Point is really killing it so well. Those exclusives would be amazing, I'm sure. Would love to try more expressions, and they have such an amazing bottle too. Glass stopper and all. Yeah, that stopper is the unique thing. And um, uh, if Whiskey Jason is still with us, which I doubt, um, I could demonstrate how to open up the stopper of the um, Shelter Point bottle. But I'll <coughs> what I'm going to do is I'm going to get to that whiskey when it's time to get to that whiskey in about a week or two. I'll be uh, making a video about the uh, Smoky Point, or the sm or is it Smoke Point? It's one of those two. And Swami Suave has joined us to say good afternoon. Good afternoon, Swami. Good to have you with us. And Caledonia is very solid malt at Whiskey Straight Ale. Oh, okay. Uh, Soren SRN. Wow, the wall is finally full. Good job, Quig. I am you sometimes. You drank some great, great bottles, all the best. That's not quite. There's a few spots up there that are still uh, not quite full. And, of course, we have to go the other way into the other room, which will happen eventually. Ah, okay. So, Idaho. Yeah, okay. That's right. That's right. Idaho. <laughs> Um, never tried or been there, but I'm just attracted by the story, the man, the landscape, the philosophy behind. And Leon is very cool on private talking as well. We talk blending. Okay. And here we got uh, Vegas Art saying howdy, Quig. Howdy, Vegas Art. Good to have you with us. Thanks for joining. Mm. Bottle style, this glass stopper, yes. Uh-huh. And love the 12. It's fantastic weed distillery in general. Now what are we? What did Greg say? Oh, Caledonia. No, that's not Caledonia. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Hey, Swami. <laughs> Hello, Greg. Okay. And 
I agree completely, Greg. Very great story. Can't wait to visit when the travel opens up again. Yeah, no kidding. For me, it's about a what four hour drive, not even three, three hour drive. I'm there. Okay, maybe four hour. What's Leon's channel? Um, hold on, is it Whiskey Web? Let me check. Um, I can I can find that for you. Uh, Leon's channel is. Um, once I find it, I will type it out in the comments. Yeah, I know he's done some recently. I'm scrolling backwards in time here. Come on, where are you, Leon? I remember seeing you in the last what three days ago, maybe. Come on, come on. I'm getting there. Oh, where are you, Leon? I think it's called Whiskey Web with two Bs. Um, I'm just scrolling back a little bit here. Oh, come on. Where are you, Leon? I remember seeing a Leon video not long ago. Oh, well. Let me check. Uh, is it? Um, is it Whiskey Web? It is Whiskey Web. Um, Okay, I'm going to write that for you in a second. Here's where you subscribe. Um, Risky Web. Uh, capital W. There you go, Whiskey Web. That's where you find you you subscribe to Whiskey Web or do a search and subscribe. You'll find him on YouTube. Okay. There's Swami saying those glass dumpers started on wine a few years back. Yeah, I'm not surprised. And I even when we were there, when I was at the distillery, I asked Leon, whose idea was the glass stopper? And he says, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> that was funny as hell. Okay, Swami saying, nice to see spirits doing the same. Okay, 13 people watching. We're slowly sliding away. Haven't experienced any though myself. Okay. Uh, hi, Graham. Okay. Edredor topic, food quig. Okay. We're talking about Edredor 12, Kalino. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. I got too many things going on at the same time that I can't follow. Because every comment is about a different topic from the last one. Um, whiskey web, yes. And I think there's a space between whiskey and web. Um, no, I'm busy with other comments, Greg. That's why I can't get to yours right away. Uh, there you are. Okay. <laughs> I'm slow. I'm not immediate. I'm not, uh, I'm not electronic. I'm, I'm still biological. So I can only get to things uh, as, as I get to them. Those glass stoppers seem ideal for infinity. Yes, they're very good for infinity bottles. Exactly. Mm. Okay, I'm caught up now. If you type a new one, Greg, I'll be right on it. There it is. Okay, here we are. Hi, at Jason Coates. Okay, I'm on it. I'm not behind now. See, if I'm busy answering some other um, uh, comments that, and I'm going into detail, you write a comment. I can't get it right away because it's behind, uh, or I'm slow, or something like that. Very nice. Well, can I get the last drops out of this? 
Yeah, the last drops. We'll open 14. I might have to go to something real special after this one. If I continue on, and I might continue on if you guys keep commenting. If you don't do a lot of commenting, well, then I'll just say, okay, fine. That was nice. <laughs> yeah, that's possible. You might be too talkative. And the thing is, you're talking about different threads at the same time, and I have trouble following what's going on. It's just how it is. <laughs> All right. See if anything new comes up here. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is what makes these live streams your style. Uh, because I'm always behind what's going on. Yeah. Mm. You know what? This is a 14-year-old Oban that I just finished. You know... I might have another open sitting around. I might have another open sitting around. If you give me a moment. Oh. Got a lot of vanilla on that last mouthful. A lot of vanilla. That didn't seem to be there before along with a bit of ginger and a little bit of honey and a bunch of other things that come out of Open 14. Open 14 is not the greatest, although there are a lot of um, a lot of, shall we say, novice whiskey drinkers or a lot of beginners who find Open 14 to be the one, to be the thing to beat. Um, with a little more experience, it's not, but it's, it's nice. It's nice to drink, but it's not the best whiskey there is. Uh, we got, have you tried the Oban DE? Have seen it around on the shelves more recently. Uh, yes, I have done the Oban DE. I can even give you, uh, just a sec. Um, open. 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 Distiller's Edition. Video details. I can even. Oh, yeah. Here we are. Edit. Copy. And uh, StreamYard. Here we are. Edit, paste. There is the um, video. I have tried to open 14, and there is the uh, um, there is the uh, the link to the video of Open 14. When did I do that? That was back in, uh, oh. That was back in uh, July of 2017, so almost three years ago, I had uh, Open Distillers Edition. Um, yeah, it was good. I liked it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Oh, I should actually press chat. There it is. There is the link <laughs> to the video <laughs> of me doing Oban Distillers Edition. I'm, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, Telesker DE and OpenDE are both currently available here for USD 100 plus taxes. 
yeah, you know, I can't, I haven't found them here. I saw a Delawinny uh, Distillers Edition today, but I didn't see a Talisker or an Oban. But I've had both. I've had Talisker and Oban Distillers Edition. Uh, share it here on chat. Well, there it is. It should be right after this, uh, this one. Here it is. There, okay? See, there it is. It's on the chat. Uh, I had typed it, but I hadn't pushed the chat button to send. There we go. Okay, there we go. There we go. I'm going to get me some more water and get me that other whiskey that I said I was going to finish off or at least have some of. Hmm. Excuse me just a moment. All right, I'm coming back. Here we are. I am back. I have another Oban right here. This is the Oban Single Malt Scotch Whiskey Distillery Exclusive Bottling Batch 01, 48% ABV, which I picked up at the distillery last year might as well do it in style if we're going to be doing open all right where are we here we got our comments cheers at greg's whiskey guide sorry i'm listening while tab out doing some game content fair enough it's all good uh sometimes i forget you're just eight thousand kilometers away from my place food quick must have some consequences on the signal. Oh, okay. Yeah, could be. No, it's me. I'm slow. I don't get on the. I, I I'm not. I'm never up. To, I'm never on the most recent comment. Like this one here says three thirty two. So I'm two minutes behind. Okay. Uh, okay. Great. YouTube has brought everyone closer. Yes, for sure. <laughs> and i uh, never seen that one, Oban Food Quig. Understand why now. Oh, this one. Yeah, you can only get it at the distillery. <laughs> and it even has the, the UK stamp on it right, right there. Yeah. Batch 01. It says here, limited release. One of 8,000 bottles, or is it 6,000? Looks like 8,000 bottles. That's why you've never seen this, because you can only get it at distillery. So, yeah, I've, I've been there, and I've done that. And there's not really much left. I can maybe finish it today. Then I'll have to go shopping for some more open. 
How much whiskey did you bring back from your trip to Scotland? Hmm. I could pop up another link. Um, let me see. Uh, no, 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 no. Scotland. Uh, sure. This is going to take a little bit of effort to find. Um, what if I put down brought? What's that for? More or less. Ah, there we are, more or less. Here we are. Video details. I'm going to put the uh, link for this one. Okay, let me just get a link for this uh, this link here. This is the whiskeys that I brought back from my trip to the UK. Edit, copy, and StreamYard. Edit, paste, and chat. There you are. That should be at Corey Martin evening. Fantastic. Good to have you with us there, Corey. Thanks for joining us in our little gathering, our little get together this afternoon. It's still afternoon here. It's only 3.37 and you can see the sun shining in on the side there. As you go through this video, the light shifts around and changes. I've got the light right on my face here, but uh, the light from the sun over there is brighter. Um, it's here. Anyone knows how many bottles we can bring back in Europe from Canada? Just to know, you can bring back as many as you like, as long as you pay the duty uh, in Europe, I guess. I had to pay some duty on the bottles I brought back from Can from, from Scotland and, and England to Canada. Um, and because I was in a rush, I did not, at the airport, I did not, uh, back at Heathrow, I did not get my UK tax, uh, my value added tax refund, which I could probably got a couple hundred dollars back, but I didn't do it because I was in a rush. Or at least I perceived that I was in a rush. I like to be somewhere early rather than having to scramble and be late and miss my flight. I think you can bring back as many bottles as you like, as long as you pay for them. <laughs> the duty, that is. But when I went to the UK, when I landed at Heathrow, I had five bottles of expensive Canadian whiskey that I was going to share with people. And they let me go through. They asked me, is this stuff that you can buy on the shelf? And I said, no, it's all discontinued. And they said, oh, go ahead. <laughs> um, not much at all, sadly. I be, believe 1.14 liters. Yeah, that 1.14 liters is without paying duty on the whiskey. But I think you can get away with bringing more in as long as you pay the duty on it. I don't know what the duty is on whiskey. Uh, bringing into Europe from somewhere else. It was a load, if memory serves, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and Europe into Canada, yeah, okay, that's wrong, yeah, okay. Um, I'm enjoying a drama of Old Fitzgerald, 1920, delicious. I've never tried that, I haven't got it here. Maybe someday, Next time I'm allowed to go into the United States, I think the borders are still closed. 
But next time I'm, I can go there, I can maybe find some. And here, yeah, there is my, uh, that's my video of what whiskeys I brought back from the UK last year. Uh, thanks to Scotch Whiskey, not cool. I pick already a few Shelter Point, JP Weisers, Alberta to start with. Yeah, okay, well, just make sure you have some money to pay duty on those. You'll be all right. <laughs> uh, thanks to Food Quick. Oh, you're very welcome, Greg. Uh, I paid a, almost $200 duty on what I brought. So, you know, it is what it is. Thanks for sharing the link. That's impressive. If you don't mind me asking, what percentage was the added duty coming back to Canada? Well, considering that I spent about fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars on whiskey, the two hundred dollars was a, a a pittance. It was a trifle. It was two hundred or what was it? One seventy, one sixty. I forget what I paid, but uh, you know, the whiskey was you know at least fifteen hundred dollars and. So what? I paid another 150, 160, 170 on that. And I had something like 33 samples plus what was it? 13 how many bottles of whiskey? 13 bottles of whiskey and about 33 samples. It wasn't that bad. Really, you know, I didn't I didn't mind paying the duty to bring it into the country. It was all right. All right. How are we? Oh, Macroll is here. Good to see you, Macroll. I'm from Russia and I'm bored. How are you? You're a lot of people are bored in Russia. A lot of people are bored and lonely in Russia. Huh. Good to have you with us. I'm doing good. I'm I'm feeling no pain right now. I'm I'm just finishing off some uh, some ovens that I had sitting around for a while. This one, 48% uh, alcohol by volume. Don't know how long I'm going to be on here for much. Uh, don't know how much longer I'm going to be on here. But I'm feeling good. Ah. Mm. This one clearly tastes like an oven. But you also taste the alcohol in it at only 48%. And, oh, that's not bad at all. I, too, live in Canada, and I'm hoping to one day go to Scotland. Yeah. Um, depends where you live in Scotland, in, in, in Canada. I'll let you in on a little tip. I live in Victoria, British Columbia. And I flew in through um, Calgary. Now, at the Calgary airport, you don't get your bags back. Your bags are checked all the way from the UK through to Victoria. So I could have got away with paying no duty at all and said I had nothing to declare. And my bags would have been checked through from Calgary to Victoria. And I would not have had to uh, go to a customs agent with my bags. I would have just gone. Well, I just ended up coming home, but I didn't get in contact with my bags and my whiskey and everything until I was in Victoria. So I put on the declaration how much whiskey I had, and they told me I had to pay. But had I declared no whiskey, I could have just faked it and got my bags checked to Victoria and taken my whiskey home, and paid no duty on it. <clears throat> Excuse me. But that's just, uh, had I known, <laughs> have some whiskey at Mackerel. Yeah, I, I think so. Good idea. Glenn Forbes asked me how much do you drink in a day. It depends on the day. Some days I drink one or two drams. Some days I drink more. On weekends like right now, what have I had? Four. I'm on my fifth dram maybe. My fifth dram. And one dram is defined as 
um, the fattest point of the Glencairn down to the bottom, approximately 50 milliliters. So 50 and four more, I've had 250 milliliters. That would be one third of a bottle like this so far. So far. Not bad. Not complaining. Uh, Lillican lives in Scotland. Yes, I knew that. I'm looking forward to getting back to Canada. Oh, well, I'm you're welcome anytime. Uh, I don't drink at all, so it's boring here. You should drink. Come on. You must have access to some vodka. I hear vodka is quite uh, prevalent, uh, quite easy to find uh, back in Russia. In fact, I have girls from Russia writing to me and complaining about how much the guys drink vodka and then they're not very good for much else. <laughs> oh, Scotch Whiskey says, I live in Vic too. I could never risk not claiming the alcohol for fear of getting caught and having it confiscated, laughing out loud. Yeah, well, you know, that's what makes us honest and that's what makes us declare what we got. And yeah, I declared it too, but I didn't know that I could get it. I, I could have got away with it. I, I swear I could have got away with it. I would have just, you know, breezed through customs without my bags because my bags were checked all the way through to Victoria. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> the bags were checked all the way through. I could have got away with not paying. But, I, you know, being honest, okay, I paid. And uh, no, here, moonshine made of honey. Ooh. Ooh, okay. And uh, nothing wrong with honesty, though. Yeah, well, that's true, Ulakan. Um, I try to be honest. Uh, in fact, I'm honest to a fault. You know, when I could tell a little white lie, I'll tell the truth. And, of course, then, of course, I have to pay for it um, because I told the truth. And, you know, it doesn't always come out as the best for me. But at least I don't have to make up more lies to cover the lies that I've told before because I'm always telling the truth. So I just tell the truth and it's easier. It's done if you don't like it too bad. Yeah, honesty, I suppose, is the best policy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Honesty, I suppose, is the best policy. Uh, just to let you know, if you've just been joining us lately, when I opened up were these two bottles here. These are stock and barrel from Ontario, sent to me by Barry Dunham. And uh, we did a little trade where I sent him some seven Rebels um, from J.P. Weiser's which is a BC exclusive. And of course these stock and barrels are Ontario exclusive. I can't buy them here and he can't buy the seven rebels here. So we made up, uh, we worked out a trade. You got your samples. Oh, which ones? Which samples did I supposed to get? I didn't get any samples lately. Any distilleries in Scotland that are must see or don't bother? Well, all of the ones that I went to were definitely worth it. I wished I could have done some more, but uh, let's go through the ones that I did do. I went to Deanston. I went to um, Glen Goyne, I went to Oban, I went to Beaumont, 
I went to uh, Kilcoman. I went to Monahaven. I went to Lafroig. I went to um, Lagavulin. Those were the ones in Scotland. I also went to Bimber in London. I think that's it. All of them were good. My favorite was Bunahaban, but I remember very little of it. <laughs> I would love to go again. I just don't have the money at the moment to do a trip like that again. Maybe if I don't buy any whiskey and save my money for a while, I'll be able to make another trip to Scotland. I recommend it highly. It's, it's definitely worth it. And when you go to Edinburgh, spend some time in Edinburgh. I didn't spend enough time in Edinburgh, and I'm still kicking myself for it. I don't have any don't bothers, really, to tell you the truth. I enjoyed all the distilleries, all of them. And have to get going now. Have a great rest of the afternoon, evening, night, day, everyone. And take it easy and stay well. Slancha. And slancha to you too, Silver Luck. Slancha la. The samples you brought back from the UK waved through. No, I just sort of said, well, I've got like 33 samples and they're all 50 milliliters and they are, um, they're all about 40% ABV. And they calculated how much alcohol was in every one of them. But they were in my bags too. All of them were in my bags. So I didn't have to, uh, there, there was no question of waving through. I could have got away with not, declaring them at all because they were in my bags. The bags were put on the plane in London at Heathrow. They flew to Calgary and in Calgary, they were transferred from one plane to the plane that goes to Victoria and back to Victoria and customs was at Calgary, but I didn't get reunited with my bags. So it was just forgotten about. Um, had I not claimed anything, I could have got away with not having to, pay anything but since i claimed that i had 33 samples and that i had like 13 bottles and so on and so on i ended up paying some money uh, to bring that alcohol into the country although as far as they know it was all 40 percent but some of it was like 53 percent and some of it was like uh you know 58 percent and some of it was uh 49 percent or whatever so I think I got uh, got away, especially the samples. Some of them were cast strength. So I ended up getting away cheaper than if everything was itemized and, and uh, everything on. Like, okay, so call me a criminal, why don't you? Isla's are my favorite, so that list sounds amazing. Yeah, Isla. I regret that I didn't get to Brooklady, and I regret that uh, Ardbeg was closed. I also regret that I didn't go to Kalila and um, Ardnaho. We didn't go to Ardnaho because they weren't open either. But we ended up going to uh, Bunahaven, which was not usually a part of our tour because the usual part of our tour would have been Brookladi. But we went to Bunahaven instead, and I do not regret Bunahaven at all. It was it was a wonderful, wonderful stop. And that was the thing about my trip. Uh, the main focus of the trip was to get my ass to Isla and try, try Isla, uh, to visit Isla, because my favorite whiskeys are from there. So that was the 
center point. That was the focus. It was a tour of Isla. The tour started in Edinburgh. It spent one day getting to Isla. That was the Friday. The Saturday, the Sunday was visiting different uh, different uh, distilleries in Isla and experiencing the food and experiencing everything Isla had to offer. And then on Monday, we were going back to Edinburgh where the bus lo- dropped us off at the Edinburgh bus depot. And um, yeah, like that. Was supposed to be flying home from Scotland today. Oh, yeah. It was that that uh, COVID thing just screwed up a lot of travel plans, didn't it? Oh, that sucks, dude. Were you going for the Isla Festival? No, I, I just ended up going not for the festival, but for... Uh, for uh, I just went to Isla because I was interested in the whiskey. It was the first tour of Isla. It was the end of March, beginning of April of 2019. And uh, Scotch whiskey. I can only recommend three or four of those I visited so far. For instance, not to be missed, Glen Moray, Aberfeldy, the Glen Levitt, Val Blair, but also some new ones like Lindor's Abbey Distillery. Okay. Well, you're more up on that than I am because I haven't heard of uh, Lindor's Abbey. But I didn't do much of the, um, I didn't do any of those uh, Highland, well, I didn't do any of the space sides and I didn't do a lot of the Highlands. I only did the ones that were close to Glasgow uh, when I went there with Whiskey Jason and with um, uh, Roy Aquavite. Think of the savings in postage. Yeah, no kidding. (laughs) Sounds wonderful. I'd love to visit those too. Okay. Um, Worst welcome I had at Scotch Whiskey was in Delmore, to be honest. But the tour was interesting, though. I didn't go anywhere near Delmore, so I don't know. Um... We were specifically avoiding that zoo. We'd have been staying in Oban that week. Had tours booked at Springbank and Glen Scotia. Oh, that would have been nice. Uh, um, ah, what a shame. Yeah, no kidding. Next year, hopefully. Yeah. Visit Isla, yes, at Food Quick, kind of La Mecca of whiskey. Yes, yes, that's why I went there. But for me, Springbank is mandatory as well on the way to Isla. Unfortunately, Greg, I was on a tour, and the tour was going where the tour was going, and it was not stopping at all in Campbelltown. So there you go. Scotch whiskey, yeah, but we'll reschedule, postpone, not cancel. There you go. That's the spirit. (laughs) <laughs> all right I can hardly complain we all know what's happening yeah it's all bullshit consolation prize if I were you I'd grab that PC 16 digital exclusive watch my video it was originally designed to be a fish eel exclusive okay yeah but the thing is Okay, all right. Was Ardnaho on Isla open when you were there? No. Um, We sort of were near there on our way from uh, Kilchoman and back, or way to Kilchoman and back. But Ardnaho, I don't believe, was open at the time. And we were – I was – a victim of the constraints of the tour. If the tour wasn't going to Ardnaho, I wasn't going there. If the tour wasn't going to Kalila, I wasn't going there. In a way, it would be nice to do it on my own without a tour. But then, you know, there's the problems of uh, renting a vehicle and then uh, going to a distillery and uh, trying to drive back after having a few drams and yeah, it's not good. I don't, I don't, I don't endorse that. 
I won't be driving anytime until, you know, about uh, 26 hours from now. So it's okay for me to drink whiskey now, but, you know, you go to a distillery to try some whiskey, you want to drive back to your hotel. Uh, so that's why I was on a tour, because I knew that I would imbibe prodigiously. Um, maybe next time I go, I don't know how I'm going to work it out. I need a designated driver. Would anyone want to volunteer? I didn't think so. Barry, there's Barry Dunham. I bet I know it was in the box. <laughs> yeah. Cheers, Quig. I can't stay dinner time. Looking forward to Seven Rebels when it arrives next week. It should. You, you've got the... Um, You've got the tracking number. It should be there soon. <laughs> oh, I hope you enjoy it. I haven't opened my Seven Rebels yet either. Um, I will. I will. Because I'm getting towards the um, 2019 sing um, Premium Spirits release, which I haven't got to yet. Okay, I've had a couple, couple bottles from that, but uh, I'm still – working on stuff that I got before the premium spirits released in 2019. So rest assured, there will be plenty of videos coming up of things that I haven't tried yet that I still have. And Jason, Greg's Whiskey Guide, thanks for the help tip. Uh, check the video. I spent about 600 in the last week on bottles, though. Kind of need to hit the brakes for a while. I understand, Jason. I understand. I just spent $350 today, and a week ago I spent like, oh, about $600, and it, it, it's just, uh, it's a rabbit hole. You fall into it, and it just costs you a lot of money, but the reward is worth it, my friends. Don Holland. I've been before, and I'll go again. Where's Don Holland? I missed Don. There's Don Holland. Oh, my goodness. Oh, there's Don Holland. I, I missed that. I didn't see your name on it. I just saw the um, the message. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, you know what was in that box. Uh, I'm taking, I'm hitting the brakes. Yeah, okay. Okay, there we are. Uh, I'm up to date now. Greg's Whiskey Guide. At Food Quick, Lindores Abbey Distillery has been built in 2017, just in front of the oldest location set in history for producing whiskey in 1494. They haven't released whiskey yet, but old style liqueur. Liqueur. Yeah. Okay. Lindores Abbey. I'm not paid for saying that. This is not cheap, so probably think twice before yes at Jason Coates. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, okay, what's going on here? Plus, the tour assures you get in, correct? Well, the tour gets you there, but then you have to pay the admission fee, which is, what, 10 bucks, 15 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever it is. But the tour takes you there, and then you have to pay to go in. So... It's good to have some funds with you when you go to different distilleries because you're going to have to pay for the distillery trip uh, or the distillery tour, but it's it's a small amount compared to what you paid to get there to begin with. Um, and it depends which tour you take, too. There are many tours. Um, do some research, I suppose. Look up tours. Scotland. Bus tours, distillery tours, you know. The Whiskey Friend. Hi, Alan. Hey, Quig, hope you are well, fella. Yeah, I'm doing great, Alan. I'm, I'm doing good. Just relaxing here, having a few grams. Mm. And just um, going through these comments as they come along. Uh... Ah, yes, the tour, the question. And Greg's right on, he's, Greg is right on top of everything. He's, I should give him, uh, 
I should give him one of those um, one of those mechanic things. Uh, would you, uh, oh shit! It says put user in timeout and block user, but it doesn't say anything about giving you a a, a, a wrench, a spanner. Uh, but uh, they changed the whole thing now that I'm on. Um, I'm using StreamYard rather than um, than uh, Google Hangouts. Okay. Uh, Scotch Whiskey says at Greg's Whiskey Guide is actually for food quick, but I feel free to answer from experience. I'm assuming the benefit of taking a tour is assured entrance to a distillery for sampling. Um, yeah. You get to the distillery. For example, when we went to Oban. Oban. When we went to Oban, the tour didn't stop at the distillery. It stopped in the town. And it was up to us to go into the distillery and fend for ourselves. So uh, the distillery, the, the, the tour doesn't ensure that you get in um it just takes you there and then when you're there you fend for yourself to get in what the tour does do for you is it it gets you accommodations as long as you yeah it gets you the accommodations <clears throat> as long as you pay for it mm. and um Prices vary depending on which category of visit. Even there is a mainstream cheap one and only a dram or none, and some more expensive and more than an hour long where you try a lot of whiskeys. Yeah, that's true too. Um, I remember when I went with uh, Whiskey Jason to uh, Glen Goyne, it didn't include a lot of whiskey, but it included... Um, knowledge and he talked about the distillery and stuff but didn't really give a lot of whiskey and there were others where we got to take from the barrel uh, in fact on the same day when we went to deanston with uh with uh, whiskey jason and uh with roy from aquavite we were given the the spirit thief and the bottle and glasses and yeah <laughs> you know what have at it boys you know so there are many, uh, there are variables. Um, Scotch whiskey is to check out online site with the distilleries you wish to see, and especially with the COVID thing, don't expect much open ones from 2021. Before 2021, yeah. Let's hope this COVID crap ends, uh, ends soon so that we can get back to uh, appreciating whiskey like we used to. True, yeah, I'm not planning a trip there for a couple of years. Good move. Hopefully the world will be much more like it used to be. Uh, one of the most cool experiences are the bottle your own, but try before you buy. Exclusive bottlings, nice memento of your journey, but it's not always cheap. Yeah, that's true, too. I could have done that at... Uh, at Deanston. I could have had a teapot dram. Or was that Glen Goyne? I forget. It was on the same day. <laughs> I don't know. This open 48% is really hitting the spot, I tell you. Yeah. Oh, we're almost done with this one. It's getting down. Hmm. I think I'm feeling a little tipsy. How about you? <laughs> Whoa. 4.09 in the afternoon. And I started this uh, almost two hours ago. And we're still going, and we got 12 people watching. Oh, you diehards, you. Glenn Goyne has the teapot. Now, had I tried the teapot 
before going to Glen Gorn, I would have bought one, maybe two. But I only tried the samples after I got back home. Given to me by the two people who I was there with. Yes, I could have had the teapot, but I, I passed on it. I, I didn't know what it was. I found out later. And had I gone to, if I'd go to Glen Goyne again, I'd, I'd buy two bottles of teapot right away. That sample was incredible. Beautiful whiskey. Hmm. This is smelling nice. Nice and strong. 48% ABV. Hmm. What else is going on here? Uh, we've got 12 people watching. Uh, here it is fantastic. Wish I could try it. Yeah. That stuff is fantastic. The teapot dram? Oh. One of the best ever. Very much recommended. But if you get to Scotland, you'll be able to try it. If you go there. Oh, we still got Whiskey Jason. And I was with you at Glen Glen. Yes, you were with me. <laughs> Glen Gorn and Deanston. We didn't do that much at Glen Gorn, but we really rocked Deanston. Those were some great videos we made, too. <laughs> oh, what fun. It was a wonderful time. Love to do it again. <sighs> Cheers. Yeah, you know, you mentioned Glenn Moray. Greg, but I can't get bottles of Glenmore around here on Vancouver Island. They are rare. I had a port finish one that I got from actually the nearest whiskey liquor store to where I live, but only once, and I don't know if they have any left. I haven't been in there in a while. Uh, okay. But uh, Glenmore is not a very... What is happening here? Glen Moray is not a very well um, represented whiskey in our parts. I only found one bottle once and bought it. It was, like I said, a port finish. It was about $50. It was good. It was pretty good. But I've never seen any other Glen Moray locally. What is this? This is not something I want to deal with. Here, that's better. Much better. Uh, very cool, man. I'll have to plan a month in Scotland. Gosh, I had less than two weeks. I had about 10 days in Scotland. Of course, there was a day, uh, there was days in England in between because I flew to London and I flew from London back home. So Scotland was only one, two, three, four, five. Scotland was only about eight days for the whole trip. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Scotland was only eight days out of a, you know, 13-day trip. Yeah, five days elsewhere. Yeah, that's about right. And uh, hope you will work it out at Scotch Whiskey. Save some time to visit Edinburgh, Inverness, for instance. Beautiful cities, lots of nice food places. Got to try haggis. Yes, I concur. You got to try haggis. I had haggis on three occasions. One occasion was in um, at Port Ellen. We went to the Port Ellen Hotel, which is right near where the maltings are. 
and it had haggis there. I also had haggis. Uh, I had haggis three times. Oh, another time was at the Deanston Distillery. I had haggis. And there was another time. I know I had haggis three times. I know that for sure. Definitely. Definitely got to try haggis. And the food, the whole trip I was there, the food was phenomenal. The food was great. Don't be worried about Scottish cooking, okay? It's all good. Every bit I've had was wonderful. Um, Ulichan bought a Deanston 12 today, although I'm drinking just a couple of beers tonight. That Deanston is drinking well at the moment and not costing a lot. Yes. Deanston 12 is, is a good whiskey. It's very good, and it's worth the money. Every time I've had it, it was just great. I still have some here. Uh, when I'm when in Rome, yes. <laughs> what is your time right now? Four sixteen p.m. is the time I got right now. Mm. Wow, we've been on for two hours, and I'm drinking faster than I often do. I'm just into this thing so much. <laughs> yes, it's Scotch whiskey. When in Rome, absolutely. Had haggis and love it. Yeah, I like it too. It's it's definitely a change of scene. And it's good stuff. Currently enjoying an Aberlour Abunad. Anyone else loving this expression? Wow. Which batch? I've only had one batch of Abunad and it's been about four years, so I don't know. <laughs> 2.16 a.m. Oh, well, there you go. <sighs> 2.16 a.m. That would put you 10 hours. Oh, yeah, you're in Russia. Okay, yeah, 10 hours ahead of us. Yeah, that's right. That makes sense. Oh, 1217 here. <laughs> yep, that would be in Scotland. And um, things have changed a lot since 30 years. Yes, Andy is right. Even a stop at Aberfeldy Visitor Center to grab a sandwich before the tour was unforgettable. Awesome. Tour is great, by the way, at Aberfeldy. Hmm. I've had two Aberfeldy whiskeys, and they're they're okay, but nothing special, really. Uh, batch 60. Oh, cripes. What batch did I have? 44 or something? I don't even remember. And that was the um, Abunad. 12-year Aberlour, says Chris Stockley. I think I may have had that some time ago. Moscow. Okay. <laughs> All right. 10 hours. Plus one. Scotch whiskey, but according different batches, it can be a bit spirity and harsh, beautifully balanced. Special Aberlour dinner topic on my website as well. Check it out. Oh, wow. Lots going on here. I'm certainly more inclined to pick that one up now. It says Scotch whiskey. Okay, I'm losing track of what's going on. Thanks. I'll look for it. Okay, cool. Well, friends, it's been uh, like two hours. And I, I'm, I'm feeling no pain. Don't want to get back to life, I suppose. This has been a thrill. Food Craig, I grabbed the Aberfeldy 18 First Fill Oloroso Sherry at the distillery, one of the three, and it was awesome. Yeah. If only I could find that here. <laughs> 
Amber Feldy and Blair Atoll are worth keeping an eye on. I've had some of both. One thing about Amber Feldy is that the price is reasonable. Definitely reasonable. Thanks at Food Quick. Take care. Thank you, Greg, for joining us and adding so much spice to our little live. And um, do you have a scream stream schedule? No, I, I come on when I feel like it. I'm very much ad hoc in that way. I, I don't uh, have a schedule for streams. But uh, my, my videos, my tastings of whiskey happen every day. I put up videos on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. No. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday at 6 a.m. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. And sometimes on uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday at 6 a.m. And on Saturdays, sometimes I put up a video like this. Sometimes I put up a live if I feel like it. And if there's something that I've received in the mail and time to open up uh, a box or something like that. So I don't really have a schedule. It's uh, It happens when it happens. I, I do it when I feel like doing it. I don't want to stick to a schedule. This I have enough schedule with my uh, opening bottles and getting back to bottles that I opened before but have discovered are better than they used to be. Yeah. Jason Coates loves Blair Athol. Yeah. Uh, Caledonian has put some Blair Athol in their blends. It was nice. And Scotch Whiskey says to Greg's Whiskey Guide, cheers. Thanks for all the info and advice. And uh, enjoyed it, dude. Hardly seen the soul this past three months. Time to get out more there, <laughs> my friend. Time to get out, Ulkan. Get out there. Um, thanks for the great stream today. Oh, you're very welcome, Scotch Whiskey. I'll, I'll be looking for you and um, checking out what you're doing. It's been a pleasure. And, well, hope I spelled that right. Uh, whoa, wait a minute. There's somebody else here. Hi, Quig. Always watch your videos. Love them. Keep it coming. New to whiskey. Their bottle you would recommend for someone who isn't used to drinking hard liquors. Hmm. Hmm. This one? No. Maybe that's a little much. Uh, uh, uh. Go for some Jameson. Go for some Bushmill. Go for some Weisers. <sighs> Depends where you are, Elliot. I don't know where you are. But just try different things and see what you like. That's the best advice that I can give anyone. If you don't like something, don't go there. Maybe go to a bar and try some things that they have on the shelf and see what it is that you like that they have on the shelf and go from there. Oh, you're still locked down, so you can't get out. Oh, crap. Hopefully you've got some uh, some things squirreled away for for a rainy day. And yes, slanchova. That's what I'm saying to you all, slanchova, my friends. Take it easy, mate. Enjoy the rest of the weekend. Yes, Al. Thank you very much. And. Uh, Okay, Thasin Ma. Okay, I hope I said that right. Thank you much, Ula Khan. Good to have you with us again. And good morning, evening, night, afternoon, whatever it is where you are in the part of the world. <laughs>